When we implemented hash tables with chaining, a representation type had an array of buckets, and at each bucket we stored an association list. The length of that association list could vary from bucket to bucket, but we kept its expected length at a constant by assuming that the hash function distributed keys uniformly over the buckets. Finding, therefore, was an efficient operation, but insertion required, from time to time, a resize operation to keep the average bucket length bounded by a constant. At the time of a hash table resize, suppose that its capacity were C. That is, there's C buckets in the array. We agreed that we would double the capacity of the bucket array and create a new array of capacity 2C when we implemented our own hash tables. That's also what the OCaml implementation does too. So just reallocating that array cost order 2C, the length of the new array. Now, the number of bindings at the time of a resize was also going to be 2C because we resized when we had twice as many bindings as buckets. So let's call n the number of bindings. That means that the resize operation is itself an order n operation because n equals 2c. Bad, right? We've got a linear time resize at this point in the worst case. And we're not even done after allocating the new array. We also have to rehash and reinsert every element from the original array into the new array. Now that causes where each binding is in terms of what bucket it's in to perhaps change because the hash function will now uh, be used to map that binding, that key, into the buckets again. And we're going to take that modulo a new array length. So it's not as simple as just copying the buckets over. We actually have to do the rehash on every key. OK, well, there were n bindings. That means there's n keys to rehash. We've assumed the hash function is constant time. So that's order n work just to rehash all the keys. Then we have to reinsert each binding. Well, that's n more insertions into this new bucket array. That's going to be order n work as well. And that holds whether we've got a good or a bad hash function, because in the worst case, and all the keys collide in one bucket, we're still going to have to do n insertions at that bucket. So we've got a worst case linear time rehash and reinsert as well. That means the total cost to resize is worst case linear time, or big O of n. Now, you'll recall from the definition of big O notation that it really hides a constant. When we say something is big O of n time, what that means is it's bounded by some constant times n. That constant might be 1, it might be a half, it might be 2, it might be 5,000, whatever. There's still a constant hidden there. It'll help if for a moment we think about that constant, which we don't usually do. Let's suppose that the hidden constant in this particular big O expression, which is the cost to resize, is actually R. So I've chosen R there to represent resize. It will further help if just for a minute we break down R into some pieces. I'm going to break it down into three pieces. I'm going to say R is x plus y plus z. Now this is just conceptually to help us think about this. We're not going to go too much farther with it. but. Suppose that x here represents the cost to allocate a bucket, because we're going to allocate n buckets, and each one of those is going to have some cost. We're calling that x. We're also going to have to, n different times, hash a key. So let y be the cost to hash a key. And we're going to have to insert a binding n different times. So let's say that z is the cost of inserting a binding. So r, then, is the total cost per binding of doing the reallocation, rehash, and reinsert. Now, the whole reason we got into implementing hash tables was that we wanted constant time performance, and we lost it here. We blew it on this insert operation. So here's the question. Can we get 
the cost of all of this resizing down to big O of 1? Can we somehow bring it down to constant cost? Because if we could, then we would have what we set out to achieve, the best of both worlds between an association list representation of maps and a direct address table of representation of